very much, Thomas. And actually, you can stay here because the idea is now to have a panel discussion with Osma, Thomas, and with our hopefully four parliamentarians. Uh, I'm not sure I've seen you all. It's Emil and it's Dave, of course, as you met earlier. As, there you are. Uh, Janine. Uh, Janine Alvin Eriksson from the Green Party and also Mats Persson from the Liberal Party. So, uh, all of you, please welcome. I think there are enough chairs and uh, microphones. Uh, so, if you can just sit down. Should I stay here or should I be over there? Over there? Det finns ett mycket under det I mean, the whole idea here is to talk about tax reform. Uh, so the question here is, is any of this useful in the, in the Swedish context? We already have uh, a carbon tax. Uh, could we do more? Uh, could we, in some way, finance part of a tax reform by getting more money from, from the coal sector, from, from carbon dioxide emissions? Uh, anyone wants to wants to start? Anyone who has any ideas how to implement this in the Swedish context? No one wants to start. No. Uh, I can start. Okay, Emil, please. Uh, I have to say I'm uh, I'm still waiting for Professor Doctor Edenhofer to. Uh, you you said that you were gonna end on a, on a more positive note, but. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't really catch the positive part, uh, and uh, uh, it, it is someone who, 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 wants to, who wants to see the negative aspects on the environmental issue uh, uh, as a whole, but also the tax, the tax issues connected to it. I mean, that person has a lot of aspects to, uh, to see right now. Uh, it, seems like, uh, it seems like way too little is happening. Uh, and I mean, the important thing for, for Sweden, I think, is to, uh, is to s continue to be the good example, the, the example that shows that you can combine economic growth with uh, environmental concern and, uh, and to just keep on trying until uh, enough other countries and other regions of the world follow. But of course there are aspects of this that, uh, that, that Sweden also can can improve. Uh, there are there are still a, f a few areas that are exempt from carbon tax in Sweden. Uh, one example is uh, our mines. You know the the big vehicles driving around, uh, crushing mountains. They are actually exempt from uh, carbon tax. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, if that's still uh, a good idea. Uh, but uh, I I would say that our main f focus uh, must be to keep on trying, keep being the good example that we are. And uh, and show the show other regions of the world that there's a way forward. Yeah, good. Everyone will cap on us. Now everyone wants to want the word. Very good. Uh, so I will directly give it over to to Otmar because uh, you were given a direct question here. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So uh, I would like to respond because I obviously complicated so badly that uh, you didn't catch the positive note. Uh, my it's it's very positive because. Um, there are two messages, two positive messages. First of all, carbon taxation provides, in comparison with other forms of taxation, great opportunities. And, and what you are saying, I fully agree. It is important that Sweden and other countries remain a role model. But it is at the same time very important, when you want to be successful, you can only be successful if you invest a little bit of the political energy in the reform of the EU ETS. I'm hearing the same in Germany all the time. People are saying we want to push forward <laughs> things in Germany, that's fine. But you can only be successful if Europe is successful, and Europe can only be successful if you get an agreement on the reform of the EU ETS. 
And this is a very daunting task, but if you can work on these two levels, I would say then indeed Europe and the member states could be indeed a role model. And uh, Europe lost a little bit the, the, the forerunner issue, uh, and, and it has worked. But, but I'm a little bit concerned and worried when people are saying we want to do the things in our own country. So in Europe, at least, we have to work on the European and the national level. So this is what I would like to say. It's a challenge, but at the same time, it creates a lot of opportunities. And this should be perceived as a positive note. Uh, I mean, in some parts, uh, some of the emission rights in the EUHS are auctioned and uh, actually an increasing uh, part of them. I mean, for example, a, a price floor of 20 euros per ton or something like that. I mean, would this generate substantial revenue for the states? Oh yeah, this would, this would create substantial revenues. And it, it's a little bit ironic that with the, Euro, with the price of 20 <coughs> euros per ton CO2, basically uh, this is the same amount, the same amount of subsidies we are investing in Germany for renewables and with the same amount we could buy basically out all the uh, Euro, uh, German emissions. It's a little bit of a strange issue, so this just to show, so what is the leverage and the potential of a price floor, this would create for the member states huge amounts and huge additional revenues. Okay, uh, Janine, please. Uh, yes, as we have, uh, sorry. Um, thank you for, for both two interesting uh, words on this theme. And I think it's very clear that uh, the ETS has to be more ambitious in order to, uh, um, to achieve the climate goals. And it has to be clear that the polluter pays principle is uh, included more into that system. But also on the thing that uh, Emil Shellstrom was was uh, touching is that we need to be a good example. I think that is one of Sweden's most important roles. And uh, we have now have a climate policy framework being um, processed in Sweden. And uh, I think that is also a thing that we should uh, consider to spread words more about, except from, from, uh, from uh, higher taxes on, and, and the good examples that we've seen from that. Leif, please. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Uh, for us it's, it's very important to work on the European level. Uh, if, if Sweden shall continue to have this leading role and try to, to develop it, uh, then I'll have to say that nearly every time we are uh, facing old rules in the European Union, which are working against our ideas. It's not only the biofuels directive, it's, it's the lack of, of um, modernization of the energy taxes directive, which, sorry to say, but Germany was one of the bad guys there. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, so, yes, there's, um, I think, it, I think there's a, it's a very broad uh, approach in Sweden, in political parties, and in the society to, to be in the, in the front line. But now that I have to say that most of our problems are, are dealing with, with uh, old rules in, in the European Union, which stops us from doing what's the right to do. And that's uh, very important. A little, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. It's not a big thing, but uh, the government just uh, announced that uh, there will be a tax deduction if you buy a um, um, uh, permit for coal and kills it, and you will be uh, you will do it. Yeah, get a tax deduction. Mm -hmm. Sweden. Maybe that's not a big solution, but uh, it shows a little bit what we think about the system. Uh, Mats and then Thomas. Thank you. I think it's uh, crucial that you have uh, two strategies uh, at the same time. One, one is national level and the other one is European level. And I think that Sweden is a good example of a country where you can have high taxes on, on carbon and uh, still have a good economic development. 
Uh, but I also think the timing is really important right now to have this discussion because what we have seen in the last 10 years or five, five six years is that oil prices, prices going down and the same thing is happening when it comes to price on carbon emission. And I think this means that investments in new technology is, is to some extent decreasing, both in terms of fracking but also in terms of um, uh, fossil-free technology, and that's that's a challenge for us as politicians. To it's easy for us politicians to to uh, to make the choice or to choose a solution that subsidizes a lot of uh, a lot of industries. And I think that's a that's a bad that's a bad strategy. We need to use. Uh, the tax strategy in terms of giving the right incentives to invest in new technology and to, to phase out the, the fossil fuels. So I think it's crucial that we work on, on both areas, both on the national level and also at the European level, and that you use the tax instruments and not the subsidies. But uh, is your party proposing, for example, raised taxes on gasoline and diesel and so on at this moment? I think, yeah, we, we, we have a proposal where we say that uh, you should make, uh, you should combine lower taxes on, on work with the higher taxes on, on carbon, on, 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 on uh, CO2 emissions. And I think that's, uh, that kind of uh, strategy implies that you will uh, decrease the emissions, but you will also have, uh, have a strong <coughs> so I think it's easier, it's important not to not use uh, green taxes in order to raise the tax level in society. It's, it's important that you do the uh, two things at the same time. Thomas, please. Yeah, well, sadly enough, I think that <coughs> the, the sweet. Thank you. Sadly enough, the uh, the Swedish carbon tax is actually threatened uh, by um, a contradiction with with. If I get it right, I think it's the motor fuel tax directive or something like that. In, in, in the European Union, uh, that basically doesn't recognize the motive for the carbon taxes, but says that all sort of similar fuels that you could put in a car have to be taxed the same way. And so this would imply that, uh, that a biofuel should be taxed in the same way. In fact, even uh, in proportion to volume, which is perverse, because many of these uh, biofuels are alcohols and they actually weigh more. Uh, so, um, so this implies a higher taxation per unit of energy, and, and it's quite perverse, obviously, if the purpose is to tax carbon and uh, the biofuels have uh, lower carbon emissions considering their life cycle. This, this is just one of the things that illustrates the, the, the complexity of, of acting at several levels. The other has already been mentioned that if you have a Swedish carbon tax, for instance, or, 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 or the energy event or, or other initiatives that lower emissions in one country, then this will lower the uh, equilibrium price on the European trading scheme and would lead to raised emissions somewhere else. People were pleased that in Paris there were so many non-governmental organizations. They said the governments are not very functional. It's good. There were mayors from hundreds of cities and there were people from uh, all kinds of from business and so on. But all these sub-national actors will have the same problem. If they do something, there is this risk for the perverse effect on lowering uh, prices and then someone else emitting more. And, and so we need to use the instruments that allow you to take decisions at several levels. And a tax is much more appropriate if you have a tax at one level and then subsidies uh, uh, and so on, they, they are additive. But if you have a, a cap and trade scheme as your basic instrument and then do uh, local initiatives, they tend to be undone by the, uh, by the, by the cap at the higher level. We're running a bit late, but uh, I'll give the word to Emil as well. Uh, my, my final point is that it's really important uh, when we try to influence our partners uh, around Europe and around the world to, to stress the fact that 
our environment, environmental policy is part of, of an overall plan to increase growth and create jobs. Because if we only talk about raising taxes and spending money on environmental issues, uh, then, there's, then the response is going to be, yeah, we know it's about that, that's why we don't do it. Uh, but we have to stress that this is a part of an overall, uh, an overall process to actually uh, sustain Sweden as one of the, the top nations in the world when it comes to economic development as well, uh, which I think is a crucial point. Thank you very much. Uh, so, we we'll conclude this panel here because the idea is just to have a brief discussion here. I mean, the panel will be up again in the second and the third session, and also, I mean, you meet all the time. So, let's see this as a beginning of discussion between all of you. Uh, so, we're running 10 minutes late in the schedule. It's no big deal. Uh, we'll just uh, let's say that we have a short break now and we meet again at uh, 2 sharp for the next session uh, with uh, Tom Anderson and uh, Lars Kalfors. So, please a short break.